Hey, my beautiful witches, it is Murphy Gray Hunter. Okay, I was rigging my phone to stay up there because I could not uh, balance it. I really need to um, buy a um, tripod for for my phone since I record off my phone. Sorry, I'm trying to find something here. Uh, I wanted to show you guys a new book that I got. Um, I am getting ready to order um, a ton of books. Because remember, I told you guys that um, my husband is giving me um, money for my birthday, even though my birthday was in August. But he's just like, I'm just going to send it to you all at one time. My husband is sending us money to go shopping around this time of year. He sends money for me and for each of the girls to um, go shopping for, for winter clothes and stuff like that. So he's going to go ahead and send my money for my books with that. And I can't complain because, you know, you, you know, can't complain. So, but anyway, I don't even have my book um, list together. I have like about a billion books on there that I want. And so he, he's going to expect me to buy some clothes. So, because he's like, I'm sending you some money for clothes. So that way, when we go to um, New Orleans, you'll have some clothes to wear. I'm like, <laughs> I am so excited to go to New Orleans. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay. I want to show you a new book that I bought. Like I said, I wasn't going to buy any books because I'm going to be ordering. But we went to Barnes & Noble. Um, my sister and I and Jade went to Barnes & Noble because she was looking for some kind of book. So I went to go look there. And, you know, and I'm really surprised that Barnes & Noble has such a great selection of witchy books. Um, and the very beginning, they didn't really dry section you know um they have a lot of um sylvia brown books which i love sylvia brown um and uh, i have a lot of her books and they, of course they have a lot of books on paranormal uh, paranormal stuff you know like ghost hunting and um you know like um angels and spirit guides uh, but now they actually have a lot of witchcraft books a lot of them are more wicca based but they do have, I was surprised I found a really great voodoo book there. Um, you'll see them. they're not like a bunch. They'll just have like, they just kind of put all the books together. So basically it's a lot of Scott Cunningham, you know, a lot of Wicca based books. And then you'll see a sprinkle of a book here, book there about hoodoo or voodoo or um, Santeria or anything else, you know. So every once in a while you will come across a good book. And so I came across this book and it's called, excuse me. The Magical Power of the Saints. And this is by um, Reverend Ray T. Malbro. Where is that glare coming from? Here, let's do this. What is this glare from? What's that from? I'm such an idiot. I'm looking for the glare. Ding dong. It's coming from the freaking fracking phone. Sorry. Anyway, there you go. The Magical Power of Saints. So, this is a pretty interesting book. This book cost me $13.95 at Barnes & Noble. Um, and um, it just has um, practical magic, um, folk religion. Um, it's basically, um, this book is, um, it talks about... It talks about uh, deities and saints. Um, it talks about divination um, and religious practices, honoring your ancestors and the dead, uh, working with candles, the language of candles, psalms of the Bible, ritual um, components and alternatives, um, and uh, and becoming a uh, priest or a priestess. Uh, and then uh, All Saints uh, Chapel of Faith. And then the final word of advice. Okay, sorry, I need some glasses. I can't see for crap. Anyway, um, okay, so you know how you, you see a bunch of these candles that have saints on them. You know, m the ones that are most popular, I think, are the Archangel candles. Um, you you see those uh, people burning the, the, you know, angels. The candles um, for the angels are, represent whatever it is that they're looking for. If they need protection, they're going to go for Michael. Um, and so, um, 
but there's so many more saints than just, you know, having the, the archangels. So, um, sometimes I think like if you remember like with your grandparents or like more of the older, uh, generation, uh, burn these candles, um, and you see them on their tables and whatever, but it, all these candles are burnt for, um, certain things like, um, you can write a petition just like you do for a regular, uh, Botanica candle. You can write, um, a petition of what it is that you want. You can anoint it with that particular oil if you have it, and you can put it right underneath the candle of the saint. Like, let's say, for example, um, Our Lady of Mercy. Her feast day is September 24th. The day of the week is Sunday, and the color of the candle is white. So you're going to put a petition for peace, health, uh, needed justice, release from jail. That's what you would use the Lady of Mercy for, that particular saint candle. And, you know, these saint candles are the regular glass seven-day candles, and you'll see saints on them. Well, you know, each saint represents something. Um, the, the Lady of Miraculous Metal, um, her feast day is November 27th. Day of the week is a Wednesday. Color of the candle is blue and white. Petition her aid in restoring health for bad habits, broken special favors um, to avert danger, protection uh, for, sorry, this thing is too loud. Protection for motorcyclists. Sorry, that was too loud. And, um, and just blessings. The Lady of Hope, her feast day is April, I mean, sorry, August 1st. Her day of the week is a Thursday. Color of the candles blue. And you will petition for peace to stop harassment from enemies, protection in times of war. So you can use these um, saint candles, um, you know, to aid you and help. You know, if you're just asking for help from a saint, that's what you would use these candles for. I'm sure you can use these candles in several different ways, not just in this way, but that's one way that you can use them. So this book talks about that. Um, it talks about um, the religious practice. Um, and it talks about, um, it talks about, um, I'm sorry, I was looking at the neighbors because I can't stand those little children. Um, this talks about honoring the ancestors and the dead. Now, of course, um, when you're honoring your ancestors, that is completely different. Everybody does it completely different. You could put, like, for example, you could do um, a little table or wherever you're going to do this, you know, um, tabletop or wherever. You can lay a white cloth <clears throat> or whatever cloth you feel best represents your ancestors or whichever you would like to use. You could use um, a white cloth or whatever color. And you can put um, candles of saints that if you like, or you could use just plain candles, whichever color you think best represents your ancestors. Uh, but you do want to have a white candle on there as well. Um, and then um, some people put a glass of water um, and then they put the water is supposed to represent um, you're giving them a um something uh cool to drink a refreshment for them to drink when they come to visit um you know that's just what some people say that that represents um you could also leave um things that your ancestors really like for me um my ancestor um altar will have for both of my grandparents or well, grandmothers one of my grandmothers, she really loved pink roses, so I will have pink roses on the table in honor for her. And you can put a photo, or you don't have to put a photo. You can put whatever best represents that particular person. Um, and then for my other grandmother, she used to roll her own tobacco cigarettes, and so I would leave her tobacco. Um, and I may, may get a, um, a cigar there is a message for or a cigarette and just open it up and just um, dump all the... All the tobacco on a little plate for her or just leave the cigarette one or the other um and then um or you know you could just do photos or whatever their favorite foods or whatever you want to do and then i'm also going to um uh, honor my um my ancestors my native american ancestors 
um, and I'm going to leave an offering for them and, and honor them. Um, so this book kind of talks about ways that you can um, honor your ancestors, and it gives like a prayer in here, uh, an example of a prayer, which, which you can say when you're honoring your ancestors. So it kind of talks about that. Um, it talks about the different type of candles that you get at the Botanica store. Um, those seven day um, candles that you get, like um, the, um, you know, the, those candles that you, the ones that I show, the, the different stuff on there. The Come to Me, the Hummingbird, Money Drawing, babe, the um, Baby Leaf, um, Sacred Heart of Jesus, Seven African Powers, you know, it talks about those. Um, it also shows you a candle layout for ritual of transformation. If you're trying to do a transformation, that's a uh, layout that you would do with crystals and with candles. It also talks about the language of candles and how to read your candles. You know, um, for example, if your candle burns um, clean on the bottom and black on the top, what that might be. Um, and so it talks a little bit about that. It talks, shows you some examples of petition papers on how you would do petitions if you are trying to um, get somebody or get somebody to leave or there's more petitions. Um, it also has um, some examples on how you address your candles. Like for example, if you are... trying to get somebody out of jail, you would use um, St. Jude candles, one white, one red, one green, dressed with St. Jude oil, and write the name of the person who was in jail, and you put that as your petition underneath the candle. Um, or you could use the Holy Trinity candle, dressed in holy oil, again, write the person's name of who you want to get out of jail. They have, um, you know, to win a court case hold on to your mate, maintain health, you know, just examples like that. Um, different prayers, um, a few uh, malicious um, spells in here. Um, this, it just has a lot of good information. Do you hear my dog barking at the neighbors? Good boys. Um, and has Psalms of the Bible, and which is good because I uh, have a book of Psalms that I bought. I wasn't sure why I had bought it, but I bought, I had ordered it some time ago. And it's um, teaching you how to use Psalms in your um, spell work. And so, for example, if you are um, dealing with an enemy or a hostile person, you could use Psalm 7. And the petition is to overcome an enemy plotting in secret against you. Or Psalm 9, to protect against the power and evil of an enemy. So it shows you how to use the Psalms for what particular problem you're having. Um, and it talks about ritual components and alternatives. Uh, and so, um, yeah, this, is a, this is a really interesting book. I'm glad that I got it. I've never seen this book before. I've never seen any reviews on this before. But then again, I haven't looked for one. But this, is a, this so far seems to be a very um, interesting book to read, and I'm really glad to add this to my collection. Alright guys, again, like I said, I got this at Barnes & Noble. It was on sale for $13, not on 